Yes, I know it's a long one, but rest assured, looking at these platforms, it's definitely worth it. Hi, welcome back to Chatted by Rail here. I'm Charlie. You join me on part three of the platform syndrome over on the Branch Line station. Will it ever end? I hear you mutter. Now, last time you saw me construct a platform all bolted down to the layout. Crazy mistake because um, I've had a change of heart with Steve Smith and it's, it's a really sensible way of looking at this, but I'd screwed it through this platform into the baseboard instead of through the baseboard into the platform. So I had to get a magnet, find out where the screws were, rip, rip the tiles out and lift the platform up. And this platform, like <laughs> the first one, will be scrapped. No big deal, we we're gonna move on. Now, Steve Smith had, men had mentioned about making up a, uh, an MDF sheet of one mil ply, um, just scribed out with a laser cutter um, with all the patterns on it. What a brilliant idea. He'd actually made two, and one has a, uh, a single cut, and one has a double cut. And obviously with me mucking around trying to fit all this kind of guttering and everything else, or the drain, it would just, it wouldn't happen. You just work, you just order it, buy it, stick it down, sorted. Except the sheets would be somewhat bigger than this, you know, perhaps a half meter sheet that would go in the post or whatever. And obviously it would have to be well supported. Now I thought that's a good idea. But what have I done with this? Well, I received it, it's MDF, you can sort of see the underside. Um, and I sort of, I know, I'll spray that with um, Humbrol, sorry, Humbrol, with Halford's grey primer. This has always been a favourite with modellers. And it may look like this, because that, that's a later kind of can. Right, so there's some bad news here because Halford's have stopped making this. The new Halford's primer is much thinner. Hmm, a bit of a dilemma. Now, I'd been down to Absolute Aspects and spoken with Tom a couple of weeks ago, and Tom showed me a new paint that he was using, which is this one. It's from Motip. Anyway, it's a grey primer. I thought no more. I thought, oh, give that a go if the Halfords one isn't available. Actually, I popped over to the Wells Halfords the other day and bought a couple of cans of this just in case because they had some left on the shelf. As a matter of interest, the new Halfords can has a top not dissimilar to this with a funny lip on it. And when you open it up, this mechanism is different. Right, so this Motip paint, mm, marvellous. So I took it out, I took both of these outside, both of these versions, and I sprayed them. So there's, you can see the, the Halfords ones. And here you can see the ones with the Motip on it. And this one's gone all blotchy. Marvellous, great asset that is. And if you can hear this, this has a, uh, a roughness and this one doesn't. Now when I started spraying these, they got all blotchy and I thought, oh dear, this isn't working out well at all. Oh yes it is, because actually they're kind of, kind of pre-weathered, aren't they? This is ideal. Um, so what I'm going to do with these now is I'm just going to paint the edge, edge stones on here, a, a lighter shade of grey and hopefully put in the the white, the board of trade, white edging for the station. And because of the era I'm modeling, I don't have the um, yellow line across or the, the bobbly um, platform edging. So this is as, as it comes. Now, moving on to Steve Smith. So if you were to go with me on this one. So if you're gonna put this on your layout, and you want a couple of platforms, uh, platform canopies on it, you wouldn't want the drain. Now my idea is I'm going to have three of these Dapple platform canopies, one, two, three, out to about here. So this first area here would not have the drain. So I'm going to ask Steve to make me this platform arrangement without the drain. And then from here on, we will have the drain, although not continually because um, it ought to sort of um, break and have a drain in, you know, a square drain kind of thing. And the other thing is, in, on some stations, our, having done our research, you see the drain move from slightly off centre one side to slightly off centre the other. And of course, we've got to think about how often you're going to have 
um, platform lights installed. I intend to put platform lights inside of the canopies, but obviously you need sort of ordinary sort of lamp posts. So these, all of these things have got to be considered. Now, finally, here's the um, anomaly, let's call it, shall we? Now, trains, in their, on their, well, not trains, but canopies do not overlap trains. The trains actually just come to the edge of the platform and so do the canopies. So as you can see, this canopy is too wide. So I've asked Steve to produce me um, the platform edging that is, I've got to think about this, 88 millimetres wide rather than around 80 because this is this platform is too narrow for these canopies. I could try and modify the canopies or scratch build the canopies, but I'm not going to do that. I like these this kind of version. Um, might need to knock it around a little bit, but um, I'm, I'm going to expand both platforms and they'll have ramifications on the left because I have to move a track or two, no big deal, um, to accommodate these new, um, uh, the new, um, what do you call it, Pla my, my choice of canopies and of course with this new type of platform. So that's where we are today. So what I'm going to do next is paint up these, uh, this blotchy kind of paving and see what, it, we'll see what it looks like and then get back to Steve and talk about production. Now just before I nip over and see Steve, um, I have painted up these uh, set of paving slabs and as you can see here, then I've used two different greys for the outside uh, stones and this white line here, the, the Board of Trade white, then I've just used one coat and this one I've used two coats. And regarding what paints I've used, I'll go through them uh, a little bit later. Right, I'm off to see Steve and then I'm going away for a few days to Chester. I see that the Hornby Magazine Annual Awards nominations are out and yet again, there's a category for YouTubers. Would you lend me your vote again? Go on. Now I can't deny it, Margaret and I had a wonderful few days up in Chester. On the Friday I went and saw Making Tracks 4 in, in the cathedral there and I must thank Chris for making me feel so welcome. I've got lots of footage and what I shall do um, eventually is put it all together into a video so you can see the intricacies of how the layout works, not just pretty trains going by, but it was, it was, a, it was a wonderful experience and hopefully they'll be at Getz so everyone can see them there. I also popped in on the Saturday, or was it the Sunday? In, yes, yeah, Sunday into Chester Station. And it's a lovely station. Apparently it's a combination of various other independent railway companies that have got together with BR. It's become one, one thing. But the architecture is very, very interesting. Now, in one particular bay platform, I noticed this strange, uh, what do we call it, shapes on the, on the rail surface, on the rail head. Now, I imagine it's something to do with friction. And obviously, when the DMU runs into this bay platform, it's to, I would thought it was to provide extra grip for braking purposes. But if you know what it is and can you know, um, enlighten me, let's say, then please leave a comment in the comment section. Lovely. Right. Back to Chadwick. Now, if you're a regular to the channel, it's not going to come as a surprise that I had a total rethink on the track layout. So what have I done? Well, this was the, this is just a placeholder where the station goes. This is um, obviously a ready for plat the platform one, and this track here is platform is 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 for platform one. This one here is for platform two. Uh, platform two is a gully platform. That is, you can uh, board or alight the trains from both platforms. And this track here is a redundant track form. It's just derelict and it will do nothing more. So that's the kind of plan up to today. And as you can see, these are some nice sort of uh, Victorian tenement buildings in the background. And what they do is they hide some of this dreadful uh, back scene, which looks more like a O gauge back scene than a double O. And there's some um, sort of placeholder buildings at the far end. Now, I, I thought about this long and hard and whilst I was in Winchester, you sit there in the middle of the night thinking, is there another way of doing this? Well, yes, there is. So what I've decided to do is 
do away with this platform, uh, the redundant platform, uh, the redundant line, get rid of this uh, platform and put another platform in here. So now we have a platform that will serve this part of the goods yard. So if we want to come in with a, a, a mail train and that sort of thing, then we can come in and we can allow them to use this platform. Then we have the redundant line next to it. And then we have platforms two and platforms one. So that's the kind of way it will be. To that end, I now have to move this track over slightly and this one over slightly to accommodate that change. But I think at the end of the day, when these two new platforms are installed, then it will look so much better. I hope you agree because <laughs> I'm not going to ask for your opinion because by the time you write it in the comments section, I'm afraid I would have done it. But I would look, look, I would, uh, I'd look forward to your views on, on this change. There is a complication where the where these boards this board goes into the next board because obviously the platforms now are going to be the same length with a walkway between the two platforms but that is my current plan so now i need to sort out these platforms and the platform surfaces that i picked up yesterday on the way back from chester from steve smith now with all that in mind what has steve smith produced for me well, before I went to Chester, I had thought um, that the, both platforms would be the same length. Um, so moving the platforms around didn't really have an effect on what Steve's produced. But here we can see that we have the ramp section. We have the flat bit of the ramp section. And this is where the cut occurs, where uh, the two boards join. So this will be on the, uh, the, the rising board. And then we get to the first of the two sections and here you can see um, that it's absolutely brilliant. We've got a couple of um, pace holders here for where the lights will need to go for the, the platform, the, the standard sort of vertical lights. There we have my drain coming in and a couple of cutaways for the drain covers. And then moving up to the other end, we can see there's the straight section, um, which we require, which will go underneath the canopies. So all I need to do now with, with this piece of timber is cut it to the right length, make the cut for where the two board joints occur, and then paint all this up. <laughs> Just paint it all up. <laughs> Lovely. And then, of course, I've got to add the sides to the timber because obviously I need all of the brickwork and the cobling to go along there and then to install it. So. Let's get out the old uh, spray can outside and spray this up with the mo tip and see what it looks like. Now, with our timbers cut to length, all should be good. So this against the side of the platform, and this will go up to the board joint. Obviously, from the board joint on, then we have the next section, um, which goes on the, the level that comes up towards the branch line station. So along here, we need some brickwork and some corbling. And corbling are the couple of courses of bricks at the top of this edge, um, which support the platform itself and allow access underneath for stuff like cables to change semaphore signals and point rodding and that sort of thing. 
So what do we need for that? Well, as I've shown you in previous videos, I use this stuff from Slater's. And it is, bear with me, it is English Bond Red Brick Slater's 0399 in four millimeter. Now I get mine from the lovely shop Buffers with the very helpful Marie. And if you give her a ring, she'll send you one. It's about sort of £3.50-ish a sheet. Right, and then you need to cut it out. This is the important bit now, because <laughs> I was criticised by the way I was flagrantly waving around scalpel blades, and it's a fair point. And I was using clamps then on a ruler to try to minimise risk. Until Jeff, Jeff Davies, sent me this little gift. Now these are available on eBay for around about seven pounds and on the back of it there's strips of rubber and the, I think the front edge here, it's aluminium, I think this front edge is actually steel. So the idea is you put your plastic card underneath, press down and you press down on this edge here which keeps you away from the cutting edge of the scalpel. So if it should slip it's not going to come up over here into here, so you should be safe. And I'll be perfectly honest, it's brilliant. Now I'd just do a couple of these because otherwise you'd kind of rather fake your own death and I need two courses of brickwork because that's the top corbling thing and all I do push down here nice fresh scalpel blade come along here with a couple of cuts And we're done and it really is as simple as that lovely Jeff you're a star thank you very much indeed much appreciated right so needless to say in blue in, in blue in true blue Peter fashion I have already done done all these cuts I have got dozens and dozens of these strips so all I should do is pop some on the edge here so you can see the way I do it now, what do you use to glue it with? Well, I use rocket card glue to glue the, um, the main pieces to the timber and then to glue the um, corbling onto the uh, top of the plastic card. I've, I have been using these little uh, devices from Revel. This is like a polystyrene cement. If ever you get blocked, dozens and dozens of people have given me this advice in as much as just put a flame to it, you melt the glue and it sort of starts working again. But this, I was kind of concerned that I was going to run out of glue halfway through this project. So I got onto Amazon and ordered some more. Now this is a 12.5 gram bottle, so I ordered a pack of three. <laughs> but when they came through, I hadn't realised that there were 25 gram containers and these three were £16. Now this will last me a couple of years probably but it is a very cheap way of buying it and I shall leave a link in the show more tab um, to these. I think they were £16 for three of these and it's the equivalent of six of these bottles. So there we are. Right, so I shall set about this, stick some of this on and get back to you. Now here's the first uh, set of bricks in place, that's the platform platform edge. So now we just need to put on the, um, the cobbling and all I do, it's quite straightforward really, is using this um, Revel glue and because of its sort of needle applicator it just makes this it's pretty, pretty easy really. It's just a case of whapping some of this glue on it but do make sure that you stagger your joints. So that this piece of cobbling there doesn't necessarily line up with the join underneath. And then hopefully here you can see that I'm staggering the joints. And then again, the next layer of cobbling will be staggered a little bit further. Easy. Now 
And there we have it. So now it's a case of spraying it. Now, I tend to use Halford's red primer. And the reason for that is it's a bit too red. But when I um, put the uh, render on, it gives it a sort of a dusty feel. And as you saw in those uh, images from Cranmore, where you see the corbling, cor it then lowers the the, the brightness, the, the aggression of the stone, as it were. So it becomes more of a mellow feel, and that's what I'm after. So let's get outside with the old primer. So now it's time to paint in the um, render courses or the you know, between the bricks on the platform faces. So what are we going to do? Well, now Dan Everson, who you may well know, uses um, this sort of thing. This is a Windsor & Newton Galleria acrylic and the colour is buff titanium. Needless to say, it came from Amazon. So what does he do? Well, the way he does it, which I did it last time, is he gets some of this and he squirts it in a container such as that and then he adds, well I choose to add a few drops of water and give it a little whisk and I do appreciate that not everyone is going to agree with this you know this is quite an agricultural way of doing it and it makes your hands or your, at least your thumb dirty gets covered in paint feel at one with the world eh? right so there's that drop of water whisked in and then working on about sort of eight to ten inches at a time uh, get some this is a obviously blue roll and I get a few lengths of this and I think the main thing is the mindset don't be scared of screwing this up it's just a bit of plastic with some paint on you can always scrub it off and start again right so in for a penny, in for a pound. Right, so there's my join, so I'm going to just whap some of this in and all that really matters is I fill the, the, uh, the gaps between the bricks with this and of course it will help hide the joins between um, the brick courses. Lovely. Right, I'm not going to wait for this to go off. I take off the excess paint on the sides and then the messy bit. Because all I'm going to do is start wiping it off. And as you can see, it comes away quite easily. Now, not being scared or anything, but if I rub it with my thumb, it goes into the courses. But remember to wipe it off your thumb. So there it is going in between the courses. And to be honest, this is no big shakes. This is, I don't really see how this could be much simpler because at the end of the day now we've got our buff coloured brick which is what I was after and the brick courses are all intact and it really is no big shakes nothing to get worked up about whatsoever and I think we're basically there now hopefully you can see this bit here is a little bit thin lovely wrap a bit more on there it might be because there's an excess of the red primer underneath. But soon disappears. Right, there we are. All good to go. Now in order to break up the kind of monotony of this um, brick wall, what we need to do is, is weather it down a little bit. And also to remember where the sun is, because if the sun is shining from above, let's say, then obviously this section here will be in shadow. Now I tend to use these Tamiya Weathering Master, um, what do you call it, weathering powders, and my favourite is Pack B. And now Pack B contains snow, soot and rust. Lovely. Now. 
So when I mentioned about the shadow, oh, there is a little applicator brush that comes with it, but to be perfectly honest, it's not really up to much. It's a sort of a cheapy makeup brush. Now, what I use is cotton buds. And if I just do a little here, hopefully you can see that what I'm trying to do is to the right way around so you can see, is I'm trying to put a bit of darkness underneath, <laughs> oh God, underneath the um, corbeling to darken it down. So to make it the illusion, as it were, that it's in more shadow than the bricks at the bottom. And then once I've done that area, I then turn to more vertical streaks down as the weathering would sort of come through. And of course, there's no right or wrong way about this whatsoever. It's just kind of, you know, you, you, you see a platform in reality and you try to replicate um, its kind of look. But what I'm trying to do now is just to break up the, the, you know, the, the sort of monotony of the brick courses. Lovely. Now you do get sort of, um, sort of calcium and salt running away from these things. And so a bit of white now and again wouldn't go amiss. And we can drive that in. And trying to keep things in a vertical sense because obviously weathering takes place vertically. And then a little bit of brown as well just to sort of spruce it up a bit. But you can generally see what I mean. So now I've got these four faces to do and then we can turn our attention to finally to the top surface. Well now we get to the serious bit. Now please excuse the other camera here because I'm right-handed I want the camera to see it so you're going to have to put up with some tripod legs in the way. Now um, so I have obviously two complete platforms to paint and I'm going to tackle um, the one with the drain guttering uh, because that's the most difficult one. Um, people will always want to know and I quite understand why what paints and paint brushes I'm using. Right there is a white edging to be done on the, the last thing on the platform edging and for that I will be using a Vallejo Blanco 70.951. For the, um, the guttering through the middle I've got um, German C Black Brown and its number is uh, 70.822 and it's silver grey I believe for the edging stones. So that's the only three paints, oh sorry 70.833 silver grey. If you want to know why I've got a dot on them because when I buy them I buy them in pairs and the dot shows that's the one that's in use otherwise I'd kind of get lost. Right, um, I have a little bowl in which I put my paint in because these things are just squirty little bottles. I love them, they're brilliant. Um, and there we go, brushes wise I'm using a flat size one brush for the edging stones and I'll be using a, um, a zero zero uh, brush, this is, a, this is a sable brush uh, round made by Windsor and Newton. This is a kind of a good quality brush and I'll be using this for the guttering. And then for the white on the outside I'll probably just rinse this off and whap some of that in. But um, obviously I've got to wait for the paving stones to dry before I can do the white. I thought it would be much easier to do this off of the platform, um, you know, on the flat. Um, it, it, I think it would just make it easier. If I've got a hunking great piece of wood to do it on then it will become more difficult. So that's my sort of method of madness. Um, so there we go with the the first thing I should do is the German, uh, German what is it? German C black brown and then all I do is squirt some of this in here and this paint goes a surprisingly long way. So if I clear the other stuff out of the way to avoid any any accidents as it were and hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on here. Now I had thought of painting a black stripe on the platform underneath in case it appeared white through the 
sort of railings of this train but I put the train in place and you can't see the white of the platform underneath as you can see it's going to be a long old day well that's the drain intact and it looks uh, pretty good and there's not too many brush marks wandering off the, the target area let's say so from there what do we do next well we now need to use the let's have a look the, is it silver gray yep the silver gray onto the edging stones and i think generally if you look at platforms you tend to if they are a paved platform the edging stones are predominantly lighter than the main uh, concrete uh, paving slabs used within the platform itself and besides that it would give a good contrast and with the splodgy effect of using that motip paint it sort of adds to it sort of like a, a pre-weathered look so i shall now crack on with the with a silver grey and work my way along there it's worth a mention that um, to remove the brush marks all i have got is um, a little sponge and all i do is dab it on occasionally um, to remove any brush marks that sort of a bit that are kind of a bit in your face I am trying to keep the paint out of the uh, the the laser cuts between the platform slabs and then finally a few hours later we're on the last strip of the uh, of the four strips and we have the paving stones finished this will have to dry perhaps overnight and then I can put on the, the white line running along the platform edge. Keeping in mind of course that one of these two platforms um, is, uh, or one edge of it at least is, no, no the whole thing is, is it has very little use so uh, in time it needs to look uh, more decay, in more decayed and uh, abused as it were than the other because obviously the, the platforms one and two in the station would have more funds available for them so uh, that's kind of where we are and then hopefully this will all look okay when it's finished last bit and we're done and then with my little foam pad and it helps to take off the the brush marks and that was that I'm exhausted well it's not going to come as a surprise to say it's yet another day so what are we doing now it's time to put the white stripe on these platforms now here you can see that this line is more defined than this one that's had one coat of white and that's had the two so I'm going to put two coats on the platform was one and two and then one coat on the disused platform and I use Tamiya masking tape uh, to, to mask off the area this is a low tack tape so when you pull it off it shouldn't take the paint underneath all right notice I say shouldn't so all you do is stretch this stuff out and then by best guess is pop it into place and that looks and that looks about right super job and then trim it off swing it around and do the other side and now with the tape in place we can obviously set about painting it and if you recall I'm using the uh, Vallejo 70.951 white 
and this is all quite straightforward and when I finished I should just run down the edge because obviously the edge needs to be done as well so here we are all painted up so if I try to remove the um, Tamiya tape and um, as I said it's um, sort of non it's not it's, it's a tacky tape rather than a uh, very adhesive tape and it should just pull away just like that and there's no paint uh, running underneath the tape um, because it's a decent sort of low tack tape and hopefully you can see from there you get the effect of the white stripe beautiful now the next thing is quite serious because Steve Smith said to me that I ought to spray or paint them in a matte varnish to lock all this lot in and I must confess that troubles me so what I might do is on this uh, this test piece uh, that I did earlier is we'll spray or paint this with a matte varnish and see what that looks like before I put this lot in danger now I normally want to go and do this outside but it's absolutely chucking it down now um, so I'm going to do it indoors with a decent mask and once I've done this the windows are open the doors are open so this will soon vent through while I go and have a cup of tea so what am I using I'm using Humbrol's acrylic varnish is what says what it does on the can really so we'll give this a shake well I haven't given it a shake and we'll chuck it on there And then I'll come back and when, have a look at it when it's dried. Now clearly I hadn't read what it said on the tin because this is a varnish satin, not a varnish matte. It looks quite nice but it has this satin finish and I'm not too sure that I want that on my platforms. I'm going to have to have a mull on this. I do like the way it's locked it in but do I want my platforms to have this satin feel? Well, I've bit the bullet and got some advice from a grown-up. I gave Steve Smith a ring um, to see what he said. He said, well, it doesn't really matter, Charlie. He said, just stick your, your um, varnish on there um, because what's coming next is a black wash. And then after that, you can lock it all in with a matte varnish, should you wish. So I took his advice. I've sprayed it up. All seems sort of good, a little bit shiny. Um, but there we are. So the next thing to do is I'll park the two that belong to the platform one and two. And this is a little bit of a sort of risky business now is I want to put a black wash on it to see if it comes out OK. But fortunately, I've still got this test piece so I can put the black wash on here. And if it's good, we'll go straight on to there. And then we can think about the platforms themselves and putting them together. Lovely. Now the satin varnish is clearly dried on the test piece so what I'm going to use is the Humbrol black wash um, and we'll whap some of this on there. Now I've used this in the past and have found it to be sort of very sort of a lot of fabric in there a lot of sort of um, I don't know fibrous almost so I'm going to test it out on this test piece first and uh, see what we can get and I might have to sort of dab it with the old um, blue roll um, in case it just sort of comes on too heavily I'm not a, I'm not really experienced with washes <laughs> um, or varnishes to that matter but you probably figured it out yourself right anyway whap some of this on and see what it looks like Now it's more of a scrub isn't it really to get it uh, to get it in oh well, I just scrubbed it off really hmm. I need some time with this I 
I just want to do one side of this other test piece and see what this looks like a moment. So I think what it is doing is it's really uh, bringing, accentuating the, the paving slabs by running into the uh, the gaps between the slabs. I must confess, I do like the feel of that. Of course, this piece here hasn't got the the matte varnish on it. Yes, I like that. That's better. Hopefully you can see the difference now um, that it's um, really brought in the, the sort of grouting area now and dulled it down. Good, I'm happy with that. Let's go straight into the, uh, the first of the older style platforms. And now here you can see the difference between the sort of the bef before and the after. And it does look as if it's um, obviously aged more now, and it's a it's a pretty good look. I like that. So we can proceed now with the other two platforms, which are the ones that are going on platforms one and two, the other two pieces, I should say. Um, and then we can think about putting these onto the timbers and showing you the finished sort of result and calling it a day. Blimey, this is a long one. Now I need to ask for your imagination here because absolutely nothing is bolted down bar these three tracks. So there's the look of the, uh, the Victorian tenement buildings. We have platform one in with platform two. We have the derelict line and we have the new platform served kind of goods line for uh, perhaps parcels and mail. We then obviously we then go into the goods yard side of things with this siding and the next siding which go out on this board here. Now hopefully you can appreciate the difference between the two new platforms and the old existing kind of Pico type platform. Now over here you can see that these two tracks here no longer line up because the new platforms are wider. So I clearly have some work to do on the track going in to platform one. This needs to swing out and platform two a little just to swing out there a little bit. As far as playability is concerned, I think it is a much more exciting arrangement. That will be the phone then. It's my birthday, you see. Where was I? Yes, I think this arrangement is now more exciting because we have um, a parcels type arrangement into this old redundant platform. Obviously, down the far end, we still have our goods facility with arriving trains and breaking up the the, the trains into triplets to serve this forthcoming goods area. Clearly you will need to use your imagination on the station canopies because where you see that one there on the left hand side there will also be a corresponding one on the right hand side and two more behind there. These ones will be somewhat derelict and these will be somewhat in reasonable condition. Though, of course, the whole of this platform needs to go into a state of decay. Now, I must confess, one of my downfalls is that I find it very difficult to build in a weathered kind of condition. So I tend to build kind of pristine and then weather things down. It's the only way I can seem to get it to work. But I think you get the general idea. This little scratch built uh, building is, serves as a good placeholder um, and then the, the uh, platform itself will come out wider to encompass platform one and then come back here to a bigger area. There'll be a wall along here and then car parking for people who wish to use the station. So hopefully you can see how I've got on and the progress made over the last <laughs> several days, let's say, um, and we can take this forward. So I think we're wrapping up now on the, on the station build kind of thing. Um, so the next time hopefully we return to this area, these, um, state, these platforms will be in and finished. Um, there's very little for anyone to sort of learn from this. The platforms themselves, the platform surfaces, i.e. these things here, are available from um, railway laser lines. And there is a link in the show more tab to get on to Steve Smith. And I think he's going to make them in several different widths whether you choose to have the drain or just the plain sort of paving slabs with the edging stones is, is a personal choice thing. What do I think? I think these are a great leap forward really rather than using tile grout just to make a sort of 
a, a, a sort of a tarmac -y kind of look to a to a platform it's just we, we can do better than this and this this leap forward with MDF I think um, is you know is deserving of some sort of space on your layout but there we go so that wraps this one up I'm sorry it's taken so long but it's been <laughs> it's been a nightmare it really is quite a complex thing to do but hopefully you've enjoyed it and you'll be back in a couple of weeks time the phone's been ringing throughout the day it's because it's my birthday I'm now six, 66 year old and if you want to get me something for my birthday there's the old subscriber button so there we are right so I'd like to thank the patrons as usual there's the subscriber button the subscribe subscribing is free and there's a video here and here and I'll see you in two weeks time thanks a lot take care bye bye